This is Obi Wan Nem Daily News Podcast, brought to you by Mazi Chale. Breaking news today. Arua Consultative Forum, SCF, cautions Southwest Governors against introduction of the Regional Security Force, Operation Amotekun. A fenifer spits fire in response. In quote, who told Mieti that Yoruba cannot opt for self-determination? In another breaking news, the immediate past governor of Imo State, Emeki Kedioha, has said his administration was hinged on accountability and transparency. Good evening. We start with the breaking news from the North Former Social Cultural Group, Arawa Consultative Forum. The group has said on Thursday that establishing regional tribal security forces such as Southwest Security Outfit Operation Amoteku may affect Nigeria's unity and cohesion. In a statement by Muhammad Ibrahim Biu, its National Publicity Secretary, the body said, ACF hereby cautions against establishing regional tribal security forces that may likely affect our unity and national cohesion. The Nigerian Constitution of 1999, as amended, gives the Governor of State the powers to direct the Commission of Police in the state with respect to maintenance and security of public safety and order within the state, which the CP shall comply. This constitutional provision, in addition to the logistics being provided by the state government to the Nigerian Police Force, if properly utilized, will promote good working relationship between the state government and the police command to handle any security challenge. It is therefore the considered opinion of SCF that the disadvantages of having a regional tribal security outfit like Amoteku outweigh the advantages at this material time of our democratic experiment. The Pan Yoruba Socio Political Organization, Afenifere, on Thursday berated Mieti Allah over remarks that the Southwest may lose the 2023 presidency if it fails to drop its security outfit codenamed Operation Amoteku. The North can go to hell with its presidency. Quote, Recall that Mieti Allah Kautehore had described Amoteku as illegal, saying it may affect the chances of the region to produce the president in 2023. But our Fenifer's National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Yinka Odumakin, lampooned Mieti Allah, describing the remarks as insolent. Odumakin said, Mieti Allah now owns the presidency, which they can gift to who they want and deny who they choose. What insolence! Cow headers threatening a people that produced the first lawyer in 1879 because a lawyer who doesn't know the law is overreaching himself. Can they go and tell Yoruba in the Benin Republic such idiocy? It is now a crime that we inhabit the same country with them. If Yoruba would be colonized, is it by those we should employ on our ranches? To hell with their presidency, if the condition for it is that we must allow them to continue to waste the lives of our people. Who told these people Yoruba cannot opt for self-determination and have our own president? If they see the protection of our lives as politics, we are definitely in a wrong and impossible country. This as reported by our news correspondent, Mwada Ugochinere. Following a statement made by the incumbent governor of Imo State, Hope Uzadema, who ordered a probe of three former governors of the state, the immediate past governor of Imo State, Emeki Hedioa, on Thursday, has said he did not misappropriate the funds of the state while in office between May 29, 2019 and January 14, 2020. Speaking through his aide to Chibike Onyuku of the media outfit Punch, the governor has said he was not tensed by Uzadima's probe order, pressing that his administration was hinged on due process, accountability and transparency. The ex-governor said he carried the people of the state along during the short period he was in office as governor. His Excellency hinged his administration on due process, accountability and transparency. There is nothing wrong if the new governor says that he wants to look into the books, 
we are fine with it. Quote. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Abubakar Atiku, has said that the immediate past governor of Imo State, Emekai Hedioha, shall overcome the setback and emerge stronger. Atiku had stressed that the judgment of the Supreme Court, which nullified the election of the candidate of the PDP as governor of the state of Imo, remains final, therefore must be accepted as regards to the rule of law. Recall that Ihedioha, a former deputy speaker of the House of Representatives and governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2019 election, was sacked by a panel of Supreme Court justices on technical grounds. Meanwhile, Uzodema, former chairman, Senate Committee on Aviation and governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress, was ordered to be inaugurated as governor with immediate effect. Taking to his Twitter page, Atiku wrote, with regards to the judgment of the Supreme Court, which nullified the election of the candidate of the official PDP Nigeria, Emekai Hedioha, as governor of the state of Imo, I can only say that since the Supreme Court is final, we must accept its judgment. However unexpected and unpalatable it may be, the rule of law must guide our paths, even if logic sheds light on a different path. Let me state unequivocally that I solidarize with Emekai Hedioha, a man I know to be a great leader of men and resources. In the fullness of time, I am convinced that he will overcome his setback and emerge stronger. I also stand fully with the People's Democratic Party. In good and bad times, we must continue to be the object of hope that the Nigerian people have for their escape from the prevailing despotism and despair that has gripped almost every aspect of our national life. We provided genuine democracy for this nation once before, and I believe it is our destiny to democratically restore what has been lost due to the encroachment of anti-democratic agents. Philosophers have said that tough times never last, but that tough people do. I urge the people of Imo and the entirety of Nigeria people to not give up in despair. The nation has gone through despotic times before, and we have survived them and thrived. I am very confident that this history will repeat itself. My greatest desire, and one I hope to see again in my lifetime, is that Nigeria will fulfill its potential as the land of unity and faith, peace and progress. These four ideals have been missing from our borders for a while. And all freedom-loving Nigerians ought to henceforth work together to bring them back. In the federal capital territory, Abuja, the presidency has announced that President Muhammad Buhari is set to meet with Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in London. President Muhammad Buhari is set to meet the newly elected UK Prime Minister, Boris Johnson as he embarks on a six-day trip to London on Friday. According to Femi Adesina, the special advisor to the president, media and publicity, he will not just meet Boris, he is also going to participate in the inaugural UK-Africa Investment Summit while in London. The summit, which will open on Monday, January 20, will end on Thursday, January 23. The statement reads, President Muhammad Buhari will depart Abuja Friday for London to participate in the inaugural UK-Africa Investment Summit, holding on Monday, January 20, 2020. Hosted by the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the event, according to the organisers, is expected to bring together African leaders, international business chief, executives and heads of international organisations, to create new partnerships that will deliver more investments and jobs to the benefit of people and businesses in African countries and the United Kingdom. Apart from highlighting new perspectives on UK-Africa Partnership for Prosperity, issues of sustainable finance and infrastructure, trade and investment, future African growth, clean energy, and climate are expected to dominate presentations 
and discussions during the summit. With the expected takeoff of the African Continental Free Trade Area in mid 2020, the London Investment Summit will provide Nigeria with the opportunity to project itself as a leading investment destination for new industries. In addition, the summit will deepen Nigeria-United Kingdom investment ties post-Brexit, given that Africa currently represents just 2% of British trade activity, with Nigeria accounting for only 10% of that total. The Nigerian delegation to the investment meeting will further showcase what the federal government has done through policies and legislation to improve the investment and business climate in the country. While in the United Kingdom, President Buhari will hold a meeting with the head of the Commonwealth, Prince Charles, in Glasgow, Scotland. The President and his delegation will also have bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Johnson as well as heads of multilateral organizations. President Buhari will be accompanied to the summit by Governors Yahaya Bello, Muhammad Inuwa Yahaya, and Okeze Bazo of Kogi, Gombe, and Abia states, respectively. Also on the presidential entourage are the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, Minister of Trade and Investment, Otumba Niyi Adebayo, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Monguno, retired, and the Director General, National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ahmed Rufai Abubakar. Everyone and fans, thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Please click on the red button to subscribe and watch our video highlights, latest interviews, and our digital exclusives. And that's the daily news for Thursday. I'm Mazi Chele from all of us at Obi-Wan News. Thank you for watching. Good day.